Hello everyone, Christina here. Welcome back to an updated craft room tour. So it has been a few months since I started cleaning up my craft room and this is where we're at. I considered cleaning it up even more, but uh, this is a realistic look at after I've organized. And a big thank you to Angel Casey for helping me organize some really great spots in my craft room. I've got like moments of organization and then everything else is just kind of like, hey, this is this is how it is. So first of all, we're going to give you an update over here. Um, this area hasn't changed much since the last time I updated y'all. Um, this top shelf here is about the same. Everything looks about the same, except I've cleaned up this area right here. This is stuff that's still needs to find a home. That's a bin of new product that I need to label and put in pockets. Um, let's see here. Here is, uh, this is correspondence that I need to reply to. If you have sent me a card in the last little bit, or um, like Sue, who sent me 5 million postage stamps. Like, thank you so much, Sue. It was months ago, and I haven't uh, written her back yet to let her know that I received them. So I've been meaning to do this for a while. I will get to it, I promise. Um, I had a bunch of uh, cardstock cut for storage pockets, and I had them save. I got it from cutcardstock.com and I wanted the leftovers. So I just have a bunch of black and white cardstock in here that I can use as scraps. So, all right. So this wall didn't change much. Um, I've moved my paper trimmers over to this area. Uh, it's they just, That's just kind of where they landed. And I really loved having them there. Um, this area, you know what, my window bench or window seat has been really clean. I mostly, you know, if I'm wearing a jacket or something, I'll take it off and lay it right there. Um, it's been really wonderful to have that cleaned up and completely clear of any clutter. As for these flat files underneath, um, I did go through everything in the other rooms of my house and I pulled everything together. So now in all of these, it has some photo boards, the ones that I haven't pulled out recently. Um, more than that, I would say what's in these is um, like grid paper, really large clipboards and mats. Um, let's see, there's some yeah watercolor paper, lots and lots of watercolor paper, especially really large pads and sheets, things like that. Like really oversized things that I really needed to store there. So this area has gone through a lot and I wanted to give you as an update on exactly what's happened here. I mentioned in my original Very Messy Craft Room tour that I wanted to get my photo taking station into my craft room. It had been living in a different room and I just wanted everything in the same room. So this is what I came upon. Um, I think in my last update, I showed you guys this light and it was up against that wall. I've since brought it out. It's on kind of like this arm so you can angle it down and I've brought it out and then I have this kind of rolling a little photo station here. It's from Replica Studio. It's called their studio. I'm sorry, not Replica. It's from Replica Surfaces and it's what they call their studio. And it works really, really well. I love that I can roll it around and move it around. So what I do when I take photos is I'll roll this over. It rolls over so easy. I will roll it over in front of where this light is. And then I turn the light on and it's super bright and it just lights up that surface really well. And it's great because I can actually rotate this and change the angle of the light depending on, you know, what photo I'm taking, if I want it to highlight something different. It's been really great. And also one thing that I love about it is that I got a plain whiteboard where it's just white and I can stand it up in these grooves and bounce light back on to the light surface or the light source. So it's a great way to bounce light and not have to worry about it. Um, yeah, so I really like this and I can 
roll it around and roll it in and out of the way. I was actually really hoping that it would be short enough that I could put it underneath, like roll it all the way underneath, but it just doesn't go short enough. They do sell a shorter tripod or a shorter bottom half of the studio, but it's not on wheels. So unfortunately my countertop over here is just a little bit too short, so I can't do that. But so it would be ideal to like roll it completely under there out of the way, but that's just, that's just not how it is. So for now I just kind of roll it over and I get it in about as far in as I can going to roll it all the way over as much. So it only sticks out about that much. And you know what? All of my photo stuff is over here and you know, so it doesn't bother me too much. It's out of the way. So, oh, let's turn this light off. And if any of you are looking for a good soft box light, I'll have this linked down below. Um, yeah. Okay. So this is my workstation. Like I said, I was going to clean it up more, but then I thought, you know what, this is just, this is relatively clean. Like after I've cleaned up after a project, this is about what it will look like. Um, that's what my computer screen looks like most of the time. I like to view what the camera is viewing up there. So I've got my camera up here at the top hooked up to my computer, which I have replaced. My iMac died, the one that was here. It had had problems for years and I kind of limped along and then I thought, you know what, this is too much of a hassle. Let's just replace it with something that's great for streaming. So I ended up getting a um, studio, a Mac, Apple Mac studio, and it's fantastic. It has so many ports on the back. It's great if you're doing lots of streaming with peripherals. It's wonderful. And then I just have this, um, I think it's LG. Is it LG? Yeah, LG uh, 5K monitor, which is so beautiful. So that's my setup for how I film. I use this little remote that came with my camera to zoom in and out. And unfortunately, this camera is not sold anymore. I mean, I only bought it like, gosh, six, seven months ago. And oh, more than that, maybe more like eight. Oh, my computer just went to sleep. About eight months ago, and they already don't sell it. I guess it was like, on the last few months of its life cycle for Canon. And so I bought the last one. Now the camera that they replaced this one with does not come with a remote, which I find, find really, really strange. So um, I'll link to one that's more comparable. Um, it's a little bit more expensive than what I paid for this older model, but it's the one that's the most comparable. And if you are a card maker and you want to be filming videos, you will want that remote. So it, the one that I'm gonna recommend does come with a remote and it's the one that I would recommend if you want to upgrade to something with 4K. So I'll link to that down below if you're interested. Um, I'll also try to find um, everything I use for getting this coming down from the ceiling. I don't know if this little plate up here at the top is attached to the ceiling, if that is sold anymore, but I'll, I'll try to find something that's comparable. And then this is a Manfrotto um, arm that is coming down. And we've just zip tied the power cable for my camera straight to that arm. And then I've got an outlet in the ceiling. So that is that setup. As far as this camera back here, this camera is on a smaller tripod. It's just kind of like a tabletop tripod. And this is a Panasonic Lumix G9, I believe. Um, and it has a lens on the front and I'll link to that as well. That's the camera for all of my headshots for um, videos or, or lives or things like that. That's the camera that is recorded in my face. So that's the one I use. Down here, a lot of these cords aren't even hooked up to this, but um, this is this whole nest of cords back here. This is my laptop that I was using until I replaced that computer. Um, anyway, it's, it's kind of a mess back here, but to be honest, I, I don't have any other way of like corralling these because uh, I don't have a cut hole in my countertop. So I can't like move all the wires underneath and kind of hide them away. That would be ideal, but uh, that is not what we're dealing with. So ta-da. Okay. I've got two carts here. These are both uh, Rascog carts from Ikea. 
So the first cart has all of my Copics on it and I just leave, have a bunch of my um, like things that I reference a lot when I'm coloring on top. So those are all the sketch markers and then down below were all the refills and they don't fit in that. So the rest of the refills are down below. Um, so that's my cart with my Copics. And then this cart, <laughs> this one has all of my Olo markers. Down below, I've got Tombos and let's see, I've got my Tombos, I've got my Zig Clean Color Roll Brush, uh, just various markers. And at the very bottom, I've just got some random cords and other computer things that I decided to put down there since I would be using them at the computer. So um, extra cords or whatever are down there. And in this little sleeve, I've got my Copic Express paper. I find that, that 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 paper works really well for the Olos. And then I've got my Olo swatch chart and then a couple of my kind of tests with different color things. Just kind of like what I did with my Copics over here. I just want things I reference with these markers. I want them kept with the markers. So that's on that card. So let's take a glance inside these drawers. So... Uh, this top drawer, I've got all of my embossing powders. I need to use more embossing powder. I've got so many pretty colors. This next one down is uh, Pace, and there's really no rhyme or reason for this. Other than I went through a bunch, uh, Casey and I did, and we pulled out ones that were dried up. So all of these, as of a couple months ago, are still workable. And then I've got all of these right here. A lot of these are paper glaze from Picket Fence. And then this bottom drawer, I think I already showed you, is filled with envelopes. And I've got some on top that I haven't worked in yet. But those are on top. Over here on these drawers, this top drawer, oh, this one's beautiful. It is all Distress Reinkers. Plus, I've got my C9 Reinkers. These are the original color palette. So I don't have the new ones yet. And down here, we have all of my alcohol inks. And these are on spice racks. That's what's on these as well. Okay, so the spice racks that I'm going to link, um, they're those. <laughs> those are the spice racks. I'll link them on Amazon. They actually come with um, two sizes of kind of stepped up rows. So I don't know if you guys can tell, but this back row is much smaller. That's why it's so close to that one right there. And so when I put in these larger ones and there's two spanning the width of the drawer, when I put those in, there were leftover small ones. So I didn't use them all. So uh, we used all the small ones down here for the alcohol inks. It worked out great. Um, I bought so many sets of these spice racks. It's kind of crazy. All right, so that's the alcohol inks. Down here is um, paints, um, distress crayons, just like a lot of random other coloring paint mediums. And then at the very bottom, we have an almost empty drawer, which is lovely. Um, I'm not sure what I'm gonna put in there. I might like take some of the stuff out of the drawer up above and kind of spread everything out so I can see it. All right, so those are those drawers. On the other side of the island, we've got so this top drawer, which is things that I access fairly frequently while I'm crafting. I've got all my blending tools um, with extra foams, stampin' bugs, scissors, kind of like bottled items. This is all erasers. Um, I've also got some extra craft blades. And then I've got some rulers right here as well. This next drawer down is a lot of acrylic blocks. I've got paint brushes along this side and then brushes and just random things. I've got my postage calculators here and then some Simon Says Stamp grid sheets that I cut in half so I can just use them half at a time. Down here is an adhesive drawer, which Casey got all pretty and organized and I've since messed it up a little bit but you know what it works I know where things are um mostly it got messed up just because I wanted to add these foam strips from waffle flour into the drawer so I just threw those on top 
And then this bottom drawer has um, Zyron Creative Station Light refills, which I don't think it's sold anymore, but I still have those refills. I've got my extra plates and different things for my Empress machines, and then the larger um, rolls of foam adhesive. Okay, over on this side, this is a drawer that is mostly kept open while I'm crafting. So I'm sitting here crafting, this drawer is open next to me. Put my keyboard in there just to keep it off my work area. But I've got my most used embossing powders, Misty, um, a plastic palette, a bunch of hardboards for painting. I've got my score buddy down there as well. And then my most used inks, which is mostly um, white, black, and embossing ink. And yeah, then we've got my wide post-it tape right here. This next drawer down is a little bit of a hodgepodge of a bunch of different things, but it's mainly uh, markers and pens. Um, I've got like sponge brushes back there, some punches. Here's some of that uh, black like leftovers that I was talking about after I cut uh, cardstock down for pockets. And then I have um, some Nina 110 pound and also here it's pitch black. Uh, this next drawer down, um, this, these are sequins that I need to actually work into my storage solution. I'll show you the, the actual sequin storage here in a minute, but this is in process of getting organized. This bottom drawer is all cardstock and pre-cut card bases. So these are all A2 card bases. These are all five by seven. I've got pre-cut A2 and five by seven uh, single sheets. And then these are pre-cut to be folded card bases. All right, so that's the island. I'm gonna come over here and show you this bank of drawers so that you can kind of see what I'm working with. So this top drawer is all my foiling. I have so much foiling, you think I would foil more. <laughs> but uh, when I wanna try something, I just go like feet first or head first or whatever the saying is right into it. So I've got a lot of foil that I want to work with. So, you know, we'll, we'll get to that. Foil doesn't expire. doesn't go bad. So that's good. This next drawer down, this is where all the sequins live. This is a very shallow drawer. It's not real deep as you can see. So I have three of these bead organizers and then I've got these up here. So I'm going to move all of those loose sequins that I just showed you in that drawer into this you know, and this also, this row right here. Oh my gosh, my cat's got the zoomies. Daphne, what are you doing? What are you doing? Are you come say hello? Oh, now you're gonna be quiet. You can see how many of those uh, spice racks I have. And these are all empty bins. We're not even to the stamp and die storage yet, but that's where all those were. Okay, so the sequins are gonna be moving into here. Like I said, uh, for a bunch of other things in this video, I will link down below uh, where I got these. And then this bottom one actually has a lot of empty space. I have hanging file file folders here. I'm not even sure what's happening with that. I've got my mini mink. I've got a bunch of mint things and also a mint machine and more foil. So kind of a lot of miscellaneous things in there, but I know where it's at, so it works out. Okay, this top drawer, oh, more sequins that couldn't fit. <laughs> um, this next one down is all twine. I don't use ribbon much, but I do have a couple of ribbons in there. Okay, this is all mesh zipper bags and solo bags. Um, I've got some uh, shelf liner that I was considering putting in my drawers. I don't think I will though, but that's just like a bunch of bags and stuff. Up here, this is all of the interactive card stuff. So I've got um, like those lights, those light up things. I've got some, uh, what is the word? Like scratch off type stuff. Um, stamp sets for uh, kind of like interactive, telling you what to do. Um, I've got shaker covers, um, Google eyes, action wobblers. 
just kind of like if it's anything that would be good for an interactive card, I've probably got it in this drawer. Next drawer down is all of my gems and rhinestones and pearls and things like that that are on sheets. So um, I've got all of my Concord and Ninth enamel dots in there as well. This next one down is paper trimmers, <laughs> random paper trimmers. So um, I've got the, um, what is it? The, the deco edge trimmer from Tim Holtz. I've got a couple old Tim Holtz trimmers. Uh, sometimes when I'm like helping family or I've got people over, we need extra trimmers. So I've got those down there. Okay. I'm gonna move my garbage can out of the way. Which Jennifer, when she was here in my craft room, she's like, you know what? Someday if you want to, you could take out these drawers, like keep it as a front, but you could pull one out and it could be just trash cans inside. And I thought, oh, that's a good idea. So maybe someday, but for now, these are totally being used for storage. So this top, what's that doing in there? These are all gel presses, jelly plates, uh, brayers, different things like that. And I've got this random mouse pad in here. I don't know why that's there. Okay, this next one down is paints and mediums that I want to use, but I haven't. So I've got some, uh, let's see, these are like pastel pencils. Then I've got the paper to use with those. I've got watercolors, watercolor sets. Yeah, there we go. Down here, I've got extra Misty and Scorpel things which reminds me, I need to send out that Misty to um, our new friend from my live last week. So I'll have to do that. All right, moving around over here. This top drawer is all palettes, stencil mats, um, anything flat that's like a surface to work with. I also have my ink pad holder. I've got a couple of ink pad holders from Waffle Flower and then more palettes down below. Next drawer down is all of my full sheets of like masking paper, um, gosh, label paper, adhesive sheets, things like that. I think I showed you that in my last update that Casey helped me organize those. And then this bottom drawer is all adhesives and adhesive refills. That's one that Casey helped me organize also. All right, so photo station over here. This is all watercolors. So I've got all my Yuli watercolor sets, so many of them, and I did organize them. Um, I'll just show you briefly. Um, I got some of the larger metal tins from Yuli, and then I took the smaller tins and I broke them down. Hold on, I can't do this one-handed. Okay, here we go. And then I put them in and then this is my guide. So I know like what, where each one is from. So that's how I've started organizing them. And I wanna get these other smaller palettes into things like this. Cause I think it's a little bit more effective for storage, but I've got a bunch of different um, really watercolor sets and things like that all right here. My most used stuff, I've got Fine Text, my uh, Magello Mission Gold palette, uh, Secure Koi, all that. So my most used palettes are on the top here. This next drawer down is palettes that I don't use quite as often. So I have um, the original Fine Text, which I don't wanna get rid of. Uh, I don't use them much because uh, I leak to the one that Simon sells now, but okay, so we've got my um, let's see, these are all Kurotake Zig Gonsai Tombi palettes, and this is the replacement for one that I had used up almost all of it. And then this is the new, uh, was it Renaissance? I think it was Renaissance palette. I think that's what it was called. So just a bunch of watercolors. And then in this drawer, I've got all watercolor paper, mostly watercolor paper. I've got some, um, all to new gouache. Um, refills for my Magello Gold palettes. Um, yeah, I just got a few random things here that I need to put away, but some palettes and things like that. And then a whole stack of watercolor paper to live. All right, I think we've gone through all of the drawers. So let's look at these. 
Okay, so up here is all photo equipment. We don't have to go into that. This is my stamp closet. So what I'm doing, or what I found that I'm finding most effective is on this top drawer, I'm gonna pull it out. It's everything that's kind of new that I wanna work with. So I've got a few stamps in the front that I wanna work with, and then I have dividers showing, you know, when things are coming out. So I've got New Honeybee, Concord at Ninth, I've got some Spellbinders, got some Waffle Flower back there. So I'd have dates on them if they have anything specific. The bunch of mesh pockets over here that uh, I'm going to use at some point, but um, yeah, I've just got them sitting there for now. Then I've got a whole drawer of Simon and more Simon. <laughs> this drawer is really pretty. So it's all the six by six stamps. And I've also got stencils over here. Um, I have dividers on the stencils. I just need to make the, the labels saying what they are. Um, I did want to show you this. So here are all of my Simon Says Stamp sentiment strips. And this one needs to go to a Christmas area. But I have kind of like their topics or what type of greeting they are going all the way back here. Um, they're all of these. And then I've got some extras in the back for if I need to add more later. All right, this third drawer down, um, it's a little bit of a mix right now. Right here are my four by six Simon sets. This, this right here are dies that I need to organize back into the next cabinet over. And then over here are um, miscellaneous other companies' stamp sets that um, are fairly new. I kind of want to work with them, so I just wanted to keep them near. So there's that. And then this bottom drawer is just alphabets, and then I've got extra storage space. All right. That's the stamps. Let's go on to the dies and all that other stuff. On this top drawer, um, this bin right here is all empty storage pockets. So I can actually pull this bin out when I'm ready to start labeling pockets. Got embossing folders, more embossing folders. I have my Spellbinders Platinum 6 with the Universal Platform System right here. Um, next drawer down is all dies, and they're mostly organized. But Casey and I are still kind of going through them. It just takes a long time to go through everything, you know? So um, over here is mostly all words, and we've broken it down to, like, what type of greeting it is. And then uh, more dies, <laughs> more dies, and then more dies. These next drawers down, um, I don't need. To, I don't think, know if I need to pull them out all the way, but over here, these two bins, I'll just pull them out anyway. These two bins are, um, well... Embossing folders. I think they're mostly holiday related. And then we've got all Halloween items. Um, and then this is Christmas. And these are the dividers I was using uh, this last holiday card series. So ours we're using them for now. But um, it's all Christmas stuff. Casey went through and already pulled out the items that are retired. So this is all Christmas that um, I want to hold on to um, for possible use in the holiday card series in 2023. Uh, same thing down here. We've got uh, six by six pads, stencils, um, more like dies and whatever, um, and then some more stamps. And then down here is my personal collection of things I will not be getting rid of. <laughs> so over here, I like to have a lot of like um, vacation or cruise related things because I like to make cards for the crew on cruise ships. And I, I love to go on cruises. I usually go on a couple per year. And then I've got all of my greeting farm Anya's and all the different little stamps. I've got a bunch of more greeting farm <laughs> and this big set from the greeting farm. Um, and these big ones back here also. These are all of my um, gorgeous little mini collectibles. I've got more right here and then more of the greeting farm. And then I've got this album back here that has a bunch of those minis in it also. Okay. Moving on to this last cabinet. Up here is like miscellaneous storage that I haven't really utilized yet, but this, it looks like a mess, but it has helped so much. <laughs> 
this top drawer, um, Derek's niece is, she's very crafty. She does a lot. She makes minis and things like that. So whenever I have something to set aside for Ava, that's her name, I put it in this box and then we'll take it down to them uh, next time we see them. Other organization type things. So I've got one of my label makers. I've got dividers. Um, gosh, this is like 3M foam mounting strips and who knows what. Uh, next door down is mail call. And I purposely went through and made sure no one's addresses were visible. So I'm really hoping we're not seeing anyone's address but mine, which is public. So um, generally, this is like this. Okay. So I have yet to go through the mail for April yet. I'm about to film that video. So what I do is I've got all the mail that I picked up in these two bins and I will open them up and when I organize them I do it like this everything that's April goes in current month everything for May goes into next month and then everything else gets categorized by whatever month it is so I've done dividers for all the months of the year so for instance this person sent in this card for August and these are for September. So there's a little sneak peek for cards coming up. So I will get those soon. And then I've got two drawers of giveaway items. And then the last drawer is all shipping things. So I've got padded envelopes, packing tape, things like that. Okay. We're almost done here. We just have this wall right here. So I already showed you my cardstock storage, but here's a little update. Um, I went through and I got these uh, cardstock sleeves from Stampin' Storage, and then I put labels on them for each individual color. Down here is various cardstocks and surfaces like alcohol, ink, paper, and cardstock. I've divided, oh, let me move this out of the way. That's actually a picture I need to have framed. Um, <laughs> These are all different colors of specialty cardstock. So um, up here, everything's silver. And then we're gonna go into gold. Um, got some rose gold. And then just like various glitters. Um, my sink here, I did organize it a little bit. I got this kind of, um, I don't know what it's called. It's like a rolling rack that can span across the entire sink. So when I need to dry something, I'll put it on top here. So these are items that were wet. I have this little, I don't know what that's called. I'll link to it, but I stand up palettes and also stencils when they need to dry so that they dry on both sides. Got all my buckets in there, a bunch of pins. Um, over here is more cardstock. Um, this is all of my spill binders, this as well. And then I've got Lawn Fawn over here. Down in these, I've got like hollow cardstock or holographic, I should say, colored, um, Ranger Specialty, glossy acetate, um, Ranger watercolor, which I don't think that's what's in there. Oh, no, it is. Yeah, it is various Ranger surfaces. I've got wood, green, and vellum. And over here is my drawers of mini ink cubes. So this one's not labeled yet, but um, I think it's these two. Yeah, here we go. Here's my Concord and Knight. Um, Gina K. Got a bunch of Lawn Fawn cubes. Tim Holtz Distress, which obviously I need more space for that, but I don't have it. I've got a bunch of Simon Says Stamp and Ranger. Um, lots of Alta New. And then down here, I've just got um, random colored pencils that, you know, I might break out every once in a while. The rest of my colored pencils, or the ones that I use most often, are uh, Faber Castell, and I have those in like a pen cup that I keep out. Okay, so down below, I think I already showed you guys this area, but I've got my six by six pads and some other envelopes that don't fit in the drawer that's right behind me. So we've got that. Under here is cleaning supplies as well as um, when I want to give myself a pedicure. I have my big pedicure bucket right there. Um, this sink that's super deep is great for filling up a big, huge bucket of water to soak my feet. Over here, we have 
well, down here at the bottom, you can tell what we have. We've got Distress Mica Stains, um, Distress Spray Stains. We've also got Oxide Sprays. In the back there, I've got some items that I don't uh, like reach for all that often. Up here, this is an old drawer unit that I used to have out, but I've got, oh, I gotta slide it over. There we go. All right, I've got all of my oblique pen holders. And then I've got some white pens and markers. Um, all two new palettes, which I need to move <laughs> now that I'm looking at them. And then I've got an empty drawer down here. I have an old photo printer, boxes of photos. And then up here, we've got baby wipes. And I have my uh, laser grid from We Are Memory Heapers. Okay. I think that is everything. I think I've showed every single drawer, or most of them anyway. So when I was cleaning my craft room, I had a ton of things that I had to purge to give away to all of you. So this is, this is the giveaway video. If you would like to win one of those packages, um, please go to the form that is linked in the video description or at my blog. The way this is going to run is, um, it, it is a giveaway, but the, the winners cover shipping. So all you have to do is pay the flat rate shipping. Um, I'll have details on the giveaway page on the form. Unfortunately, it's, um, yeah, I've had ha a hassle trying to ship things overseas. So unfortunately, I'm not going to um, have the giveaway open to addresses outside of the U.S. and Canada. But if you know someone uh, who lives in the States who could receive the package for you, please go ahead and enter the giveaway. Um, I can send your prize pack to someone in the States and then they can ship it to you or find a way to get it to you. So that is an option. And because uh, I feel so bad that all of you guys, the international people, can't do this giveaway, I'm going to have a separate international giveaway for some gift cards to Simon Says Stamp. So if you are an international person and you'd like to win that giveaway, I'll have that link down below. And those of you in the US, um, if you enter the gift card giveaway and you have a US address, unfortunately, um, I'll just have to, you know, invalidate your, your entry. It's only for international crafters to enter for the gift cards. So um, I'm gonna keep this open for a week the giveaways. I'm going to keep those open for a week and then I will update uh, I will update you all when the giveaway winners are randomly selected. And uh, here we go. I have many, many, many packages to give away. So I'm thinking like upwards of like 80 to 100 packages. So please help me get these out of my house. <laughs> so enter the giveaway uh, at the form down below. Um, you will need to put your address in. And that's to verify, uh, you know, where the, the package will be sent. It just makes it a whole lot easier. And uh, if your name is drawn, I will email you and then uh, send you a PayPal invoice. Um, I think I want to say it's like $10. I think I might be a little, maybe more like 12 for the flat rate padded envelopes that I'm sending. I can't remember. I think it might be nine. I think it might be nine something, but you all, you only have to cover shipping. So it's a really great deal. And it's random, whatever's in the package. I have no clue what's in them. Uh, Angel Casey and my husband packed them because I knew if I did it, I'd see things and go, oh, that's cute. I want to keep it. And then I'd pull it out. So I consciously chose to not be aware of what was going into each package. So I have no control over what is in each one. So, uh, so sorry if uh, you were wa wanting something specific, I'm not able to accommodate that. Good luck to everyone. I will see you very soon in another video. And thanks so much for watching. I'll see you guys next time.